Following the U.S. Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage nationwide, many religious conservatives have predictably argued that America has turned into Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm not here to tell you what to think of same-sex marriage itself, and today I'm not going to discuss exactly what I think of the Supreme Court ruling, but what I would like to do is explain why, using just the internal logic of the Bible itself, that argument is fundamentally flawed. Now, I'm going to use the King James Version of the Bible this time. I normally am a New Revised Standard Version, but I think most everyone agrees on this version, at least that they'll accept it. Um, the relevant part we're going to refer to is the book of Genesis, chapter 19, I believe it is. I've got it bookmarked. Yes, chapter 19. not going to read the whole thing. You can look it up yourself if you'd like, but I'm going to read the parts that are relevant to this discussion. So, the situation is... Uh, we've got the city of Sodom. Abraham lives there. Lot also lives there. God is planning to destroy this city because it's just so wicked. Abraham wanted to try to convince God to save the city if he could find enough righteous men to be worth saving, and the only righteous person he could find was Lot. So I want you to keep in mind, other than Abraham, the only person that God considers righteous enough to be worth saving is Lot. Keep that in mind. So, here's what's going on. We're very close to the part where God's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. These two men, who are apparently angels, come to Lot seeking refuge, and Lot takes them into his house. Now, they're in his house, and let me start with chapter 19, verse 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. I think you know what they mean by that. And Lot went out to the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, Bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So, do we have homosexuality here, clearly? But is that the reason God's destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, just because they're gay? They're not simply gay. They're trying to rape these men. Apparently, that's the sort of thing that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. You had gangs of people just going around raping men. That was their everyday activity, and they were so surprised when Lot wouldn't cooperate with them. So that gives you an idea of just how wicked is this city. Now, did legalizing same-sex marriage somehow make gay rape okay? I wouldn't think so. But yet, for so many centuries, Sodom, and the word sodomy from that, has been associated quite simply with homosexuality. I mean, how fundamentally flawed is that? That we would associate the mere act of homosexual sex with Sodom, where people were going around raping each other. I also want to point out to you that Sodom would have had to have been a really wicked place because Lot is the most righteous man in that city. Now, you heard the story I just told you. This is the same Lot that just offered his daughters to a gang of rapists so that he could protect those two men. So, a man who offers his daughters to a gang of rapists is the most righteous man in Sodom? If he's the most righteous man in Sodom, how much worse must everyone else have been? So, those of you who are comparing same-sex marriage to Sodom and Gomorrah I recommend you take a second look at the Bible and really consider the whole context of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I hope you'll see, as I've just plainly explained, how absurd that argument really is. Thank you.